The Swiss National Tourist Office conducted a North American talent search to find a new TV host to showcase some of the country's diverse summer activities and culture. Thousands entered from all across North America, but there was only one winner. Travis Sherry, founder of the travel website Extra Pack of Peanuts, a site designed to help people travel more, spend less. After winning the host search contest, Travis and his wife Heather are about to embark on an amazing adventure. Destination Switzerland. They'll explore St. Moritz and the Engadine Valley. They'll travel by panoramic train to Luzerne, where Travis will discover paragliding. Then it's on to Bern and the Bernese Overland for more adrenaline thrills and a trip to the top of Europe. This is Lights, Camera, Switzerland. Switzerland, if the heavens are reflected on Earth, this country may be its truest representation. Blessed with majestic mountains, pristine lakes, and rolling meadows as far as the eye can see, Switzerland is the perfect year-round destination for any outdoor enthusiast. Located in the heart of Europe between Germany, Italy, Austria, and France, Switzerland is a country that's rich in nature and culture. Home to approximately 8 million people, German is by far the most spoken language. In fact, 19 of the country's 26 cantons are predominantly German-speaking. After our transatlantic flight on Swiss, we travel by train from Zurich to St. Moritz, the jewel of Graubünden. Nestled in the Engadine Valley, this iconic alpine destination is best known as the birthplace of winter sports. It was here 150 years ago that two British visitors enjoying a summer vacation took a bet with a local hotel owner. He suggested if they liked the summer in St. Moritz, they should come back in the winter when they love it even more. The two visitors took the bet and returned at Christmas, liking it so much that they stayed through Easter. The birthplace of winter sports and host of two Winter Olympics, St. Moritz is a year-round vacation destination. Located at an elevation of about 6,000 feet, St. Moritz provides a wide range of summer activities. Add world-class shopping and many local cultural attractions, and it should be no surprise that St. Moritz is recognized as the number one mountain holiday resort in the world. One of the region's most popular summer activities is hiking. You can easily access the local mountains via cable car or gondola. Our local guide Rudy grew up in the Engadine. Dating way back before cable cars, he's enjoyed skiing and hiking these mountains for over 70 years. In the winter when you would ski, how long would it take you to go up the mountain? And then how long did it take you to ski down? Depend. Normally, you take, uh, when it's short mountain, you take one hour, one and a half, and down. Depend. Yeah? Five and minutes, Luce, maybe? Less. So less. Maybe. So one hour up for a couple <laughs> minutes down. Do you have a favorite hike that you like to go on? These trucks here, fantastic. Huh? Go in there. You see over there the cows? Yeah. Huh? And down, down to the next valley and go over and go to Maloya. And then uh, you come back on the other side. It's not difficult when you got these trucks here. And when you like more difficult, you have to, to go up. Hiking on Mount Corvach is a great way to quickly immerse yourself into the Engadine's glorious surroundings. Best of all, this wonderful feeling of freedom costs absolutely nothing. Hotel guests staying at least two nights at more than 100 participating hotels can ride up to 13 funiculars and cable cars free of charge. Even if you're in the area for just one day, the Swiss All-in-One Travel Pass offers great discounts too. To download details of individual hikes complete with altitude and GPS data, visit engadine.stmoritz.ch. From high above the Upper Engadine, you can't miss the stunning, pristine waters of the lakes below. Lake Silvaplan is the worst kept secret among water sports aficionados in Switzerland. We head to Silvaplan as sport to learn about the various activities and try our hand at paddleboarding, and who knows, perhaps windsurfing. I'm here with Alex, and we're at Silvaplana in the Engadine Valley. And Alex, you're going to tell us about all the awesome activities we can do on the lake. Well, we've got a lot actually. It's um beautiful stand-up area and windsurfing and kiting of course because of the wind. We are pretty high in altitude and we've got a big difference of temperature which makes we build thermic wind who's coming every day around noon. Okay. So which is perfect for the morning people paddling. Okay. Stand up paddling in the afternoon for all the windsurfer. And you're gonna be the one who's teaching us how to windsurf, right? I'm gonna be the one, right? All right, well, good luck, because neither of us have ever done it. <laughs> Thank you, good luck too. I heard it's up to how good the instructor is for yeah. how good we're gonna be out there. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be all right. It's time to test the waters. Just a little warm. 
warm. Woo! Right here. A little warm here. It's a little warm. Our first challenge is to find our way onto the boards. It's one thing getting on the board and another staying on it. Right. <laughs> Heather slides into the lake and I, yep, I quickly follow. Uh -oh. Alex said the lake was pretty warm, but even with this wetsuit, I strongly disagree. Alex lied, that's not warm, it's cold. After trying our hands at paddleboarding, it's time to step it up and tackle something even more challenging, windsurfing. Surfers on Lake Silva Planet can reach speeds of 50 miles per hour in the right conditions, but I'll be happy if I can stay upright for 10 seconds. It's like driving a car. First, I can close a little bit the sail. More I'm gonna close the sail, more wind I'm gonna get into the sail. Okay. All right, that's the power. Mm -hmm. All right. So okay. I'm gonna go forward. You're gonna feel, it's like yeah. pulling you. You're gonna have ah. this kind of feeling, like this part yeah. is right. trying okay. to go there. No, watch out, be careful. Try to stand as much as you can. Okay. Straight. straight up. Proud. After a few last minute instructions, it's go time. You look great, Trav! I managed to successfully lift the sail, but seconds later, my first attempt comes to an abrupt end. Take two goes much better, so Alex cast me to the wind. Surprisingly, I'm able to hold on for almost three minutes. Why did you give up? Go on! I certainly didn't break any speed records, but all the same, I'm feeling pretty good. It's definitely a lot harder than Alex makes it look. Really excited to see how Heather does with this. Her balance is usually a lot better than mine. She's usually much better at the action sporty type things. So I'm expecting her to pick it up pretty quickly. There you go. Wow, all right. Alex, come on in, she's good. Your master opinion, you have to give us an answer. Who was the better windsurfer? Oh, you can be diplomatic. <laughs> no, 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 Who stood no, the no, proudest? No, no, I'm really proud of you both, actually. No problem. No, no, you did both the same, and uh, actually, we... The same. Let's, let's agree. <laughs> she looked much better doing it. St. Moritz is renowned as an adventure sports playground, but there's so much more, including some very unique activities. Just a couple of miles from St. Moritz, we find the village of Pontresina. Here, there's more great hiking trails to explore with plenty of surprises along the way. One footpath takes us to an area of outstanding beauty. And wait, what's that? Classical music? It's said when the Camerata Pontresina strikes up the music at midday, everything in the forest becomes more vibrant. And I must say, I have to agree. Another little surprise close by is a Ricola garden that serves as a living exhibit featuring the 13 natural herbs contained in each soothing lozenger. Free to the public, you can take a Ricola quiz to see if you can figure out each of the herbs contained in the cough drop. It's not as easy as you think. Yeah, this has got to be... I don't know, maybe not. You know, if some of these pictures have flowers on them, it'd be a lot easier if these plants did. Ah, but that would spoil the fun. Did you do this one? Yeah, I had no idea. Number six? No idea. How many do you think you got right? Like three. That's maybe. probably three more than I got. <laughs> I might have got time, and that might be it. I couldn't even find the peppermint, the one that I thought I was definitely going to get. Our next stop takes us to a working alpine cheese dairy to see the traditional way it was made many years ago. Located at the foot of the Mortarash Glacier, a couple of miles from Pontresina, this idyllic alpine hut is reached easily on foot or by train. From the beginning of July to late September, you can actually watch cheese and curd being made over an open fire. To begin, Peter separates the milk into liquid curds and solid whey, which is done by souring the milk and adding rennet. The process of separation takes about three hours. This is the third hour of the cheese making process. Don't worry, I have not been doing it the whole time. But if I had been, I definitely would not need a gym membership. Pretty easy job you have. <laughs> is this it? <laughs> 
After the curd is separated, there's plenty of uses for the leftover whey. Some people actually bathe in it, and others, well, they drink it. Cheers. 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 Prost. It's actually, I like that. Next step is to scoop the massive curd into a giant cheese ball and transfer it to a mold where the excess liquid is pressed out. Wow. Yeah, no, not easy job anymore. That's heavy. That is a lot of cheese. All right. The excess water is removed and the curd is flipped, quartered, and placed in individual buckets where it's pressed into shape with weights. Moisture content determines whether a cheese will be soft, semi-soft, or hard based on how much pressure is applied when the cheese is packed. Oh, these are heavy. Oh, man. Easy job, easy job, yeah. Normal cheeses are left to rest under controlled conditions. This begins the aging process or ripening, which can last a few days to several years. During this process, some cheeses are washed in brine or is salt water on the outside to add flavor. If you want to learn more about traditional cheese making, visit the Alpine Dairy. Now this is a cheese plate. I don't know what it is, but it's delicious. <laughs>